Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial for how to use Jamboard in the classroom. If you want to get access to these resources, you can go to the link right here, bit.ly slash Jamboard slides and gain access to this. This tutorial is going to be a little bit of presentation, um, but then a lot of demonstration. And so we'll talk about the different ways that you can use Jamboard and then take a look at some concrete steps that you can do in order to to start the work of uh, using Jamboard in the classroom. So first of all, what is Jamboard? The Jamboard that we're talking about is not the $5,000 device that is an interactive whiteboard. Rather, we're talking about Jamboard the app, the mobile application and web service um, that allows for you to have a digital collaborative whiteboard um, on your device and then obviously you can project that up if you want to do so or just share it around with students uh, or uh, your peers. So we're going to talk about the why and the how of using it in the classroom. So why would you want to whiteboard at all? Whiteboards have been hugely valuable just in general in our classrooms um, for you know multiple decades and before that you know being able to write things on the walls of the classroom um, was standard practice um, going back you know hundreds of years and so with chalkboards and slates and things like that. But the reason why you do whiteboarding is it is a space for free form thoughts, for notes and ideas. Uh, it allows for documenting the learning as it is happening. Um, you know, if someone is talking or if you want to capture something, you are documenting that learning as you are are having the conversation or discussion in the classroom. Multiple contributors are sort of built into the idea of a whiteboard, not even an interactive whiteboard, but everybody who's got a marker can contribute, right? Everyone is on the same page because you're looking at the same surface. Now, digital whiteboards fundamentally change this because that space is infinite. It is no longer the confines of that single board. It allows for documenting learning over time. So not just as it happens in that one moment, but that it will always be preserved. You can document it forever and it is always digitally accessible. The multiple contributors is expanded sort of exponentially because not only is it anybody with a marker, but anybody with a device that can add to that whiteboard creation, move things around, and you have it access, uh, accessible from anywhere. And then even though you're still with that idea of being on the same page, that same page can be duplicated and modified and changed from wherever you are. So you get every, all of the benefits of a regular whiteboard, but by making it collaborative and device-based, you get all of the major benefits of being an internet-connected whiteboard or collaborative whiteboard. So um, I just want to be very, very clear that you do not need the Jamboard device. You just need a mobile device device. Okay. So you don't need the, you know, the $5,000 <laughs> object um, that you buy from Google. You just need at least one single mobile device. That can be an iPad or a Chromebook with Google Play. Um, those are the two best ways of doing it um, because you get all of the features of uh, the Jamboard service, um, but you can use um, a phone if you want to do that and control the Jamboard from there. Um, and you can also use the web service, although the web service, and we'll talk about this, is view only. So you don't want to do that unless you're really keen on sort of only doing the, the view only version of that. So with that in mind, let's talk about the features. Um, I've got some screenshots of a Jamboard here and you'll be able to see what it is. Um, and each one of uh, the features of Jamboard um, are very, very easy and intuitive, but I'll give you a quick tour. So if I'm inside of a jam, as what they are called, uh, inside of a jam, I get the ability to see all of my jams by going back. I see all of my screens within the jam, so all of the individual boards that you can create. If I'm connecting to that $5,000 device, if I'm connecting to that $5,000 device, I can do that as well. And if I'm sharing, and we'll talk about more about that, that's up here. But all of these are the different functions right here. So I have um, 
I have the ability to push this to the other side and it'll show up over here. I have my writing utensil, my erasing utensils, my color changing, my ability to select. And then this is the wild card right here. So this changes depending on what you wanna do with it inside of the Jamboard service. Um, all of the things that you can put into that last slot, so this is the last slot here, um, you can gain access by just pressing the plus button. And if you select any of these other ones, then it'll show up with that particular item in the last slot as well. So we have the ability to add Google Drive, the ability to um, to go out to the web and clip the web, the ability to pull in images, the ability to use either stickers or templates, um, and then the one that uh, that I end up using a lot, which is sort of sticky noting um, and being able to categorize sticky notes, and then the ability to add an image directly from the camera on the device that you're using. Okay, there are a couple of other advanced uh, items within, uh, you see this little drop down right here. Um, it actually gives you more options of the different types of drawing and we'll talk about each one of these. Um, these are very typical types of markers and things like that and then these are, are what are called the uh, or what I call the magic um, drawing tools. So this is uh, text recognition. So you write and then it recognizes what that writing is and turns it into selectable text. This is uh, object recognition and then this is the auto draw that we'll talk about as well. In the eraser, um, you can clear the whole board just by using the little drop down here. Um, in the um, the marker color section, you can change all of the colors really quickly. Um, and then in the final one here, this is the selecting tool. And then this is the, um, the tool where you write and it will actually um, erase almost immediately. So you're just sort of highlighting something. So it's like a highlighting tool. It's not really a selecting tool. Up here, again, you can do all of your sharing. So renaming, removing, adding people. You can present this particular Jamboard to a meeting. And we'll talk about that as well. Uh, or you can share things as a PDF or image. So if you just want one of the screens, you can grab that as an image. If you want all of the screens together, it'll um, mix it down to a PDF. So those are all the features directly in there. So let's actually talk about what's possible inside of Jamboard. And, uh, and we'll take a look at that. So um, obviously writing and drawing are a huge element of this. Um, so notating and ideas, capturing the language as it is shared in the classroom, or diagramming, showing relationships between ideas. These are very typical regular whiteboarding tools. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Jamboard on my iPad and we'll just take a look at what that looks like. So this is looking at all of my jams at once. Um, but what I can do is very quickly, um, I can add a brand new jam um, right here. So if I do a new jam, it'll create a brand new one. And I've got that same interface that we were just looking at where I was talking through all the different features. And then what I can do is um, very simply and easily choose and select from the different types of drawing uh, materials. So I can do my regular drawing utensil. I can um, do a little bit thicker of a, of a drawing utensil there. I have the ability to um, fill it in and it uh, it has a little bit of momentum with it. So it's a little bit better for, for doing some thicker uh, pen work. Um, this is a little bit more of a uh, um, uh, an edged marker, if you will. Um, and I'm not really sure what you call them individually. I'm sure that they have names. Um, and then this is uh, more of a, the, um, actually this is probably the highlighter. So if I went uh, into yellow, um, it sort of does a, a quick highlight. Now the undo buttons at the bottom there um, let you um, let you undo or redo uh, any of the things that you're doing there. Um, and then this last one is, uh, um, could also be used as a highlighter, but it's more of like a painting uh, kind of thing. Now, the the items, though, that, uh, that are beyond sort of the regular drawing, um, so obviously you can do your, your regular diagramming and things like that um, if you want to, um, you know, draw arrows and connect ideas. All of those things are available to you, um, but what's what you really want to think about are sort of the special tools that are only available in Jamboard. So the auto draw or auto writing 
um, are the tools that are going to be some of the most interesting parts of using Jamboard. And let's take a look at those. So those are these bottom three. And so the auto writing, if I start to write out words, um, and even objects like this, um, it will uh, actually recognize, and recognize that. Um, and even with my terrible uh, handwriting, uh, it'll let me do this. Now look to see that um, I have taken, uh, but just by pressing down on, um, just by pressing down on uh, the object, with my finger, I can select it and move it around. I can duplicate it using this duplication button right here, or I can join it to one of the other text boxes that are already there. So I just select it, and then if I actually put it um, together, then it will join it together, and now I can move these together. I can even join this one together with this one, either at the beginning or at the end and then they become the same font size um, and you can move those things around. Now let's say that I wanna get rid of it. I can drag it down here to the very bottom or I can drag it over here to the side and then it will put it on the next screen, okay? So that's auto writing, okay? If you wanna do a object recognition uh, or shape recognition, then anytime you draw a figure, it will actually create that figure for you. It will straighten things out for you. Um, any lines will be smoothed out. Um, if you want to make lines that are a little bit smoother, if you want to connect things together, um, obviously any shape that you are trying to make, it is going to try and recognize. So it's kind of like a square and it creates the square there. Um, and so that's recognition there, but the maybe most interesting tool there is the ability to do the auto draw. And so if I start to draw a person, it is going to try and recognize what it is that I am trying to draw. So I have all of these different options of people, or if I really don't like, uh, you know, what's going on, I can undo that um, and I can select uh, a different area for what it might be. So those are the more sophisticated tools in the auto draw and write. And obviously you can have multiple people collaborating at the same time doing that. Um, so you can do lots of rapid ideation um, where people are drawing different things and adding them directly. The shapes and math concepts are easy to draw relationships between. And then obviously bad handwriting becomes something that is far more legible um, and something that you're able to use. All right. So now let's talk about the other features directly inside of this. Annotating the web is super valuable. Um, and the ability to do that is sort of bound up in two of the functions inside of the application. So if I press on the plus button, um, I'm going to get access to those additional applications and I can use a web search. So I'm gonna search for an Emily Dickinson poem. Help is the thing with feathers. Um, and this pulls up and then I just tap onto the, um, onto the clipper and I can clip anything that I want to. And when I press enter, then it becomes something that is selectable. I can make it as big as I want or make it smaller. Um, and then if I want to, I can go back to my drawing tools. I'm just gonna choose the regular drawing tool and um, I can zoom in as much as I want as, uh, as I'm doing this and then draw directly onto it. So I can obviously do, you know, this is a metaphor. I can do my close reading, highlighting, all of those kinds of things. Um, and that will be observable for the kids um, directly or they can contribute and we can actually do some collaborative annotation. So anything from the web, um, you can use the little globe icon or if you wanna do a picture, um, you can actually, uh, so if we did like a, uh, a Venn diagram, uh, so if I type in Venn, not Venn, but Venn diagram. Um, I get uh, I get all of these pictures that I can just add directly in here, and then I can start annotating those. So those images become things that are easy to um, manipulate, and each one becomes its own uh, its own object. 
and I can throw that around on any one of the screens that I might want to use. I'm just going to erase that. I also really like the eraser that it sort of breaks up uh, uh, all of the, the letters and things like that as it's happening. So that's the idea of annotating the web. Um, and then the last function that I think is super valuable is the rapid uh, ideas that can be generated directly with sticky notes. And so if I hop back over to my iPad here, I have the ability to add sticky notes very quickly. Um, so if I were to do metaphor, simile, um, I want to do alliteration, I want to do, um, uh, let's see, slant rhyme. Um, and it just keeps on coming up with new, uh, new sticky notes. And then I can ask kids to place them where they might go. Um, and every time that some uh, other child connects, you'd be able to see that they're able to manipulate this. This is all collaboratively done directly on device, and you'll be able to see that. If you want to, again, drag one of these to the next screen, you can do that. You can drag it to the one before, or you can go ahead and delete it by dragging to the bottom there. So really quick, rapid ideation, collaboration on the same whiteboarding system, and you can organize your thinking and ideas with those sticky notes sort of without the hassle of, of keeping all those sticky notes and the pieces of paper. Um, and wherever you stick them, that's where they'll stay until, until you move them or until other kids move them. Um, one of the ways that, uh, that we want to think about um, you know, kids getting access to these jams is leveraging other tools that you're using inside of the classroom. So using Google Classroom actually to share the jams makes a whole lot of sense. And so in order to do that, um, you're gonna use the web service, and which we haven't really talked about yet. So I was showing you the, the mobile application on an iPad, but the web service is very easy to use as well. And that's just at jamboard.google.com. And if you're logged in with your account, you'll see all of the jams that you have access to. If somebody has created a new one, you'll refresh and you'll see the jam that we just had. Um, on the web version, it is, fully live, so any changes that are made, so if we go back to that one uh, screen, any changes that are made on the iPad or on one of the devices will change it directly onto the web version. You just can't, um, you can't edit it on the web version. So there's no way to uh, to do that easily, um, but it will show for everyone. So if you wanted every kid to get on the exact same page, you could push this to them, this jam to them, just by using your share to classroom extension. So if you're over here and you select, let's say one of your classes, I've got a bunch here, um, but I'm gonna choose this one right here and push to the students. It'll open up a new tab for them and they will see the jam and everything that you are changing uh, on your mobile device, or you could create an assignment or a question about that jam. So if you've taken notes during a lecture or um, you know a mini lesson or something like that, and then you want them to actually comment on it um, or you want them to see it and understand what's going on, you could create assignments out of the jams or let them um, use those jams and, and collaborate on them as well as long as they are, um, you know, they're, they have access to a mobile device that can edit those jams or if you just want them to use it um, as a an image, you can obviously just download the frame as an image and then post that to Classroom as well. So if you collaboratively create it, but you don't want them to uh, edit it later, you could just save it as an image and then share it uh, later. The other way that they get access to jams, so obviously you can send them the link um, at, inside of Classroom or however you wanna send it to them. But the other functionality is because we have G Suite for Education accounts, that three dot button on the mobile application on the iPad or the Chromebook with um, Google Play um, is that you can actually add people directly here. Um, and because we are G Suite for Education um, domain, we have this little toggle at the bottom that turns link sharing on or off. And the short code 
um, that we would use to access this jam is just a, uh, uh, a four character code that they can just type in or access in another way, or you can add them directly. Um, so if I added uh, Nick Steinmetz here, he's going to see this jam um, directly inside of his jamboard.google.com or on his mobile app, um, and it becomes something that he will be able to collaborate and um and do. And uh, so this is the other feature of um, the the mobile app is if you touch up here at the very top, you can actually um, create um, very quickly a whole bunch of uh, screens. So if I wanted a new one in between here, I just tap the plus button. Uh, or if I want to go between them, um, I can also reorder them just by um, sort of tapping and dragging. Um, I can also, if I need to duplicate one, if I drag up, I duplicate it. Okay. If I drag down, I delete it. Um, and so it's very easy to go between the different screens, um, to share it directly there. Um, and it makes it nice and, and, uh, simple for people to start that collaboration, collaboration process. You can also use the three dot button over here to add collaborators in the web version. You just can't edit it directly. The only thing you can really edit is to, uh, to rename it. Um, but if you wanted them to add a jam file, uh, a student to add a jam file directly in here, what you're going to do is use the join jam by code button up in the web version of this, the web service, and then they would just enter in that jams code, the four, um, the four character code, um, and it would let them, um, it would let them access that jam without you having to type in everybody's, you know, uh, account name. Um, and that's a really easy way to get everybody on the same page, unless you want to just open it up um, to sharing um, via Google Classroom, which is, is super easy to do via the, the share to classroom extension. All right. The other functionality that I think could be of value if you want people to be able to participate from multiple locations or multiple classes um, and you want everybody to see the same thing is on the mobile device, you can actually present to a Hangout, um, which is super easy and fun to do. So if I actually go into my, um, my calendar, which is the easiest way to, to set up a, a Hangout that you can present to, so if I go in here and um, add the location, uh, or excuse me, add conferencing, um, so I choose Hangouts Meet right there, um, and I'm just going to do this as a test for Jamboard. So if I save that, then the details of my uh, Jamboard are right there. So this is a, a code that can be entered, and I can present directly from my um from my device and every student that wants to join that, whether they're in the same classroom or if they're not, um, they would be able to see the collaboration that is happening directly within the, uh, the Jamboard. And so why don't we do that here where um, I am able to, um, to add this to a meeting. So I'm gonna connect it to a meeting. And what I'm gonna do is just put in the meeting code um, that is available via the, the Hangout. Um, it becomes a lot easier for uh, for us to, to use because the Hangout code um, can be used multiple different times um, for every single one of your lessons and things like that. But you can actually present this Jamboard and the collaboration that's happening to the Hangout um, for external participants and things like that. So if I turn on the microphone, if I turn on the camera, um, I won't be able to present um, uh, my Jamboard. But if I turn off the camera, I can present my Jamboard. So what I'm going to do is um, is actually connected up and we'll see what it looks like um, directly inside of the Hangout. So if anybody is joining remotely, then, uh, so if I join the Hangouts Meet, then what you're gonna be able to do is see all of the contributions that are being made directly within this uh, within this Hangout, and you'd be able to see the whiteboarding that's happening um, and even have folks contribute to that whiteboarding um, directly. So I'm gonna have it join the meeting and you'll be able to see all of the collaborations that are happening because I'm presenting from my mobile device 
into the Hangout itself, um, which is something that is is pretty powerful when you think about just being able to connect up um, inside of a uh, inside of a, a mobile um, and collaborative whiteboard. So you see, um, this is the same Jamboard that I had, and it's being presented directly to this Hangout, and anyone with the, the link to this Hangout is able to see what's going on on the collaboration um, on the Jamboard. Um, but obviously you can do the same thing just by sharing the link to the Jamboard if you don't need the video conferencing um, component of it. So I'm gonna hop out of our Google Hangout, um, and we will take a look back at the presentation itself, because um, we can wrap it up. This is uh, you know, a quick tutorial of how to use the tool, uh, but essentially all you need is the mobile device or the web service uh, in order to connect up to Jamboard. Um, you can download the application from the Google Play Store or from um, the iOS uh, App Store. Um, it can be provisioned out to uh, iPads using an MDM very easily. Um, and then all of your students would have access to it just using their Google account. And so, if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, you can find me uh, at BH Wilkoff uh, or contact any of the personalized learning partners in Aurora Public Schools um, at plp at aurorak12.org. Um, please let me know what questions you have. Jamboard is an incredibly powerful tool and um, uh, I hope that you find use for it. Um, there's a lot of different ways of letting both kids collaborate on it um, and then also preserving anchor charts, preserving notes, preserving ideas from the classroom, all generated into one single set of collaborative whiteboarding um, spaces. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.